Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar on I, uh, our IO Wellness webinar on staying healthy on your feet. So some physical health tips for nurses with our own nurse, Shannon Truax, who is here to talk with you about, you know, from her own experience and with her background in nursing as well as wellness, how she stays healthy on her feet. So really looking forward to today's presentation and hope you are as well. And just to note, if you have any questions or comments in today's presentation, Feel free to leave those in the chat box for Shannon. And without further ado, I will pass over the presentation to Shannon. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me again tonight. I'm really excited to talk to you about um, being physically active and being healthy because as nurses, we are naturally physically active just because we go to work. Like our jobs are very active, they're very demanding, and so we're going to talk about that today um, in this presentation um, and kind of go through some of, some of the ways that we can survive that 12-hour shift and take care of ourselves not only when we're at work but on our days off as well. Um, so what we're going to talk about exactly is we're going to kind of review some of the points from previous uh, sessions, so if you missed those, I'm just going to touch on those. Those are always available and recorded so you guys can catch those um, at other times. Um, but we're going to talk about do nurses actually exercise? We're going to talk about the physical risks in healthcare. Um, proper techniques are just not enough, even though this is what you know the hospital systems teach us. So we're going to talk more detail about what that means. Uh, we're going to talk about the three for me rule, and I'll explain to you guys what that means. Uh, Non-work activity and what actually counts as physical activity. So let's get started. But first things first, of course, this is the disclaimer. Um, you guys can review over that. And let's kind of talk about some of the things that I talked about in some of the previous sessions to kind of catch us up to where we're at with this one. Uh, basically, the most important thing and takeaway I want you guys to remember is that taking care of yourself as a healthcare provider is very important. We always put everyone else's needs first. We're always caring. We're always giving. But we got to give back to ourselves and take care of us. Um, we also talked about how do we do that. And by doing that, we do by going back to the basics. Back to the basics of what it means to take care of ourselves, sleeping right, hydrating, um, exercising, nutrition, all these factors, managing our stress, especially takes into accountability if we are healthy or not. Um, we talked about stress and how taking those deep breaths that we always tell our patients to do, getting outside, and our best medicine, which is laughter, um, for helping with stress uh, management. We also talked about hydration and how we're always checking all our patients' INO status and what about the INO status of a nurse uh, and making sure we're keeping that in balance. Um, and what we drink is just as important as how much we drink. Um, and then last week we talked about fueling our bodies properly and what we're putting in our body as far as nutrition and food. And I know uh, Amy has a lot of nutrition talks um, that go along with that. Um, so some of these topics are what we talked about previously leading up to today's topic, which is going to be uh, the physical activity aspect of things. Um, so catch those if you missed any of them. Um, so do nurses exercise? So when people, you know, think of their typical jobs, the 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and call, they have their very sedentary lifestyle, and then they say, oh, I need to exercise on top of that. Well, nurses look at this and they say, are you kidding me? I just ran around for 12 hours. I lifted 400 pound patients. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I got my exercise in, right? Um, so do we exercise? Yeah, for sure. Our job is very active. However, do we get that other physical activity outside of work or are we too exhausted? Um, and what actually counts as physical activity? So we're going to get into that later on in the presentation. Um, so let's look at a day in the life of a nurse. We wake up, we take off our normal pajamas, and then we put on our scrubs, which are basically like pajamas. I mean, this is one of the perks of the job, right? We get to basically wear pajamas to work. Uh, so hopefully you have a good, comfortable uniform um, for doing that. Then we grab all our tools of the trade, you know, we pack our bag with our stethoscope and any of the other tools we use, our pens, our papers, our badge. Um, hopefully you're packing a healthy lunch, as we talked about from last week. Um, and definitely bring your water bottle because you're going to need to be hydrated um, during your shift. Um, so bring in all the, those tools of the trade with you. Then you get your assignment, you get your report, you figure out a kind of brief image of what your day is going to be like. But, of course, we never know exactly what our day is going to uh, end up being like because it's the nature of the beast. 
Um, and then you hit the ground running. Like it's time to go to assess your patient, check your vital signs, see what meds they have. And, and, and it's just like a crazy cycle from that point forward. 12 hours of action. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. You're, you're running, you're going back and forth, you're doing a lot of walking, you're doing a lot of standing. Uh, even with this computer charting, it's, a lot of times we end up um, standing as we chart because we've got to quickly chart something and then go do something else. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on our feet as nurses. Then at the end of the day, you're like, Whew, what just happened? And you're so tired. Um, so this could be a typical shift for a nurse. I mean, we have our good days, we have our bad days, but this is kind of a general flow of our activity in our 12-hour shift. Um, and so how many steps do you think that nurses actually take in a 12-hour shift? And you guys can comment in the comment box what your guesses are. Um, for how many steps? We've got all these step trackers and different devices that people use to track what's going on. Um, so any guesses on what a typical 12-hour nurse would do for steps? We've got 8,000, 7,000, 10,000, 20,000. Well, that's a busy shift. Okay, guys, so let's see. Let's look at this. This is an older study, but I think it's probably true today as well. It's a 2006 study from MedSurge, which talked about how much nursing, uh, how much walking nurses did. And they found that an average nurse actually ends up doing four to five miles during their 12-hour shift. And just to compare, most Americans are walking about two and a half to three miles during the course of an 18-hour day. So they're walking less miles in a longer period of time, whereas nurses are doing more miles in a shorter period of time. So we're definitely moving around. Um, so just to put that in more of a perspective as far as the steps, one mile is roughly equal to about 2,000 steps, depending on stride and, you know, length of your stride, but around 2,000 steps. So if we put that together and a nurse is doing five miles, um, then it's going to be about 10,000 steps just in your 12-hour shift, and that's not probably including the time it takes to walk from your car in the parking structure or wherever to the building and doing that and then whatever else on your home. So you're going to get even more than that. And so nurses just want to sit down. So as everyone else is out there counting their steps and counting their trackers and trying to get to their 10,000 mark, we hit that just by going to work. Um, so it's pretty interesting the differences there. Um, so then if you break it down even further, that's 833 steps per hour. So we're busy. We're moving our feet. If we were dancing, we would have an entire dance festival going on. Um, so I love this little meme that just talks about, you know, you want to walk a mile in someone's shoes, uh, you're going to need a lot, you're going to walk a lot more if it's a nurse. It's basically the, the gist of this meme, which is kind of funny. All right, and steps are just the warm-up, right? Like, we're walking, that's part of our job, that's part of our duty, we're doing walking, but we're doing a lot more than that. We are standing for long periods of time, so if you do have that fitness tracker that's tracking all these steps and stuff, it's not going to count the time you're just standing there, but that's still a form of physical activity. It's nothing uh, major, but it's still, you're on your feet. You're still standing on your feet. You're still requiring more energy to stand than you would to be sitting down. Um, and then if there's a code or if a patient falls or someone yells out, well, then you're running, so you're adding that in. We're doing twisting, we're bending, we're emptying out the foley, we're doing all kinds of stuff. Um, we're pushing and pulling the beds down the hallways. Uh, we're lifting patients every two hours, those every two hour uh, turns that we're doing. I work ICU, so a lot of the patients cannot do anything for themselves, so you're doing a lot of it for them. Um, and as we know, there is an obesity epidemic in our country, and patients are getting bigger and bigger by the minute. And so the amount of weight that you're having to lift and push and pull with your team members is actually becoming more. Um, and then we're moving the patients and pulling the patients up. So there's a lot of patient care that involves us being physically active and working. All right, so do you feel you get a full workout in before you clock out? So as nurses, I would say your day at the hospital doing a physical activity of a job and being busy is definitely a, um, a reason to say that you exercise at work for sure. Um, we have that active, active job, and we chose this career, and so it's awesome that we get to have that physical activity. But, however, is this physical activity enough? Is that enough to count for your weekly workouts as your three 12-hour shifts? And then let's talk about the physical risk of healthcare because there is that side of things as well. 
um, this was an article from the New York Times where it talks about um, that nurses have a hard job. Like, it's not particularly easy. Um, we have a lot of intellectual and physical demands. And, you know, it's not surprising that nurses rank amongst one of the worst occupations in terms of work-related injuries. And hopefully none of you have been injured at work or haven't experienced this, but there are several nurses out there that have, and I'm sure that you probably know coworkers or people who have been injured at work through either back pain or strains or, you know, even nowadays it's starting to be a big thing about uh, uh, patient violence and, and the things that's going on with that. And it's uh, becoming a big uh, headline in the news lately. Um, and so there are a lot of things that can happen when we're at work, and we need to be able to be prepared for that and take care of ourselves physically so that we have a better chance of not getting injury, injured and um, harming ourselves. And so why is this happening? Well, there's a big thing about we're lifting too heavy of weights. And so this little chart here is a breakdown um, because you may not think like, oh, well, I didn't actually lift my patient today, but like even just lifting their arms and their head and their legs and their neck, like there, there is some weight to that. And so it shows on here like the ratio of these of different areas. And the thing of it is, is not only are you lifting and pushing and pulling on your patients to get them situated in the bed and positions and prevent those bed ulcers and bed sores and things, um, it's kind of an awkward position. Like you're leaning over the bed. Even if you put the side rail down and you're as close as you possibly can, if you went to the gym, you would never lift weights like that. You would never lift the weights far away from your body. And we do the best we can to get close. But, I mean, there's still a bed between you and your patient. And on second part of that, is even if you do the count of one, two, three, and you both lift the patient up, there's going to be a little bit offset balance. Maybe the other nurse is a little stronger. Maybe the other nurse is a little bit weaker. And so, yeah, it gets the job done. That patient gets pulled up. But even with the best hospital techniques, you're doing everything perfectly as they trained us, it's still not the best case scenario and would not be something you would do in the real world at the gym or any other kind of um, position where you would need to lift heavy objects. In fact, your trainer at the gym would probably tell you, this is too much weight for you. So when you get two nurses together to lift up a 400-pound person, or even if you got four nurses, that's still 100 pounds per nurse that you're lifting in an awkward position. And so it's very high risk um, rate for injury. And so we need to do the best we can as nurses to take care of our health, to take care of our body, and be prepared for these kind of things, because this is things that happen in our career. Um, the proper techniques have a limit. There was this huge study that was done by the Spine, Spine Research Institute um, where they looked at um, what was being done in the hospital to help the nurses out so that they didn't get injured. Um, and so they were basically talking about that the magnitude of all these forces on your spine were so large um, that all the body mechanics in the world is not going to keep from getting the back problem. Um, and they said there's no safe way to do it with body mechanics because a nurse should not be lifting this much weight. And what the study showed was they actually had um, one of the persons put on some kind of, you know, technical device where they had everything lined up attached to their spine and had all these different things so they could look at it and they had him do the typical things a nurse would do, helping the patient get out of bed, helping lift him up. And what it showed was regardless of the best techniques, and they had the, you know, the technique person and the trainer or whatever come in and show him how he should be doing it, um, there was still a lot of strain on the spine just because of the way it is and how, yes, it was way too much weight than what he should be doing the techniques, even as great as they are, you have to be careful and mindful. And what they also looked at with this study was they went to look at factory workers at, I think, like an auto factory place. And these were, like, buff men. These were like men who were, like, you know, big guys. They worked out. They had the tattoos. They were, like, these big men who worked at an auto factory. And they had a policy in place and a requirement that they were not allowed to lift more than 35 pounds. So I found that interesting that these big buff men who could probably lift our patients 10 times better than we could, if you look at the size of a typical nurse or the average, you know, person in the hospital, um, 
And then the size of the patient that they're required to lift and push and pull, there are no limits on that. There's nothing in our hospital policy that says you're not allowed to lift a patient that's outside of your range of ability to lift. So it's kind of interesting how those places are, are things are in place for other industries and not for the healthcare. And so when they asked the hospital what they were doing, they were talking about getting the lifts and all these things. And so what I would like to say to you guys as nurses is you have to protect yourself. You have to look out for yourself. Do not put yourself in a state unsafe situation. And I know how crazy it gets in the hospital. And sometimes it's easier just to be like, can you help me hurry up and push, pull up my patient? Or your patient's falling and you don't want to fill out that fall risk paperwork or, you know, the main thing, don't want anybody to get injured. But it's setting yourself up for a high level of possibly getting injured. And that could be career ending. Like there's a lot of nurses who their nursing career ended when they got a back injury from pulling a patient or pushing a patient or doing whatever. Um, and not only that, but then now they live with pain all the time because they now have this injury that is unable to be fixed and all they can basically do is take pain medications or have a surgery. And so you want to avoid that. You want to make sure that you are looking out for you, you're looking out for your back, you're looking out for your physical body and well-being um, so that you don't end up like this statistic, which I think I saw somewhere, it was like 50% of nurses will get injured before their career um, is over, which is really sad. That's a huge amount. Um, so the best thing we can do to fight back against that is, yes, find help, find the positions, find the different things that we can use, but taking care of your physical health so that you do have some of that muscle, you are doing the proper weight the best as you can, and you are, you know, having the hydration, the nutrition, and the different sleep, and the different things so that you can have the best body, the best physical uh, tool used to help with your patients and help in your career. So nurses need to be physically healthy. That's the bottom line. We physically need to be healthy as nurses so that we can do our jobs properly and so that we can just feel good being a human being outside of the nursing world, being us, having fun on our days off and not feeling uh, pains and injuries and issues. So taking care of your physical body is very important for that. All right, so you want to take control of the things you can control. Like I know we cannot control sometimes the staff ratios in the hospital and in fact there's no one to help us pull the patients up or the lift team's not around or whatever may be going on. Um, but what we can control is exercising for our own physical health and taking care of ourselves for our needs and the things that we need to do going forward. Um, so the three for me rule is basically um, – it could obviously a component, it's a component of three different factors. Um, and these are the three things that need to be into a good physical um, plan of being physically active. And a lot of times people end up doing one, they end up doing two, and every once in a while people do three of the three things. Um, because people start having their preferences on what they like to do when they work out or they only have time for one or the other. And so what I want to stress to you guys is getting all three of these components in is very important to have a well-balanced physical activity uh, routine. And so that includes cardio, which is your endurance, your lungs, your heart, keeping that ability up, your strength and muscles, which we know we need for those, those patients, um, and having that whole strength, muscle, cardio is all contracting exercises. So then you need to have the other side of the balance scale, which is the um, – uh, stretching part and the lengthening part. So basically, um, what needs to happen is that um, you need to have all three components into your exercise routine. And when we're at work, I don't think we're getting all three of these components. We may be getting two out of three because that's part of our job, like we're running around. That's our cardio, we're go, 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 we're doing our strengths with our pushing and pulling, and they're not even the greatest ways to get physical activity. It is physical activity, but it's not, you know, directly trying to do those things like you would if you were to physically work out. Uh, but I highly doubt that the stretching and lengthening of our muscles is happening. In fact, we're probably pretty tense and tight and contracted. Um, so we need to keep that in mind. And so having all three components is, the key to having a well-balanced physical routine. And so without this, then we're not balanced. And so it would be like if you stood on a three-legged stool, but you only stood on 
one leg or you stood on two legs, like that's a very unstable stool. The chances of you falling is highly likely because it's not balanced. Um, and so the chances of you getting injured or not getting the full benefit of physical activity by only doing one out of the three or two out of the three doesn't put you at a very good balanced place for a physical activity routine. And if you don't have that lengthening of the muscles after doing all the contracting of the muscles, that can actually set you up for injury as well. And we see this a lot of times with people at the gym or people who go to work out or sports injuries and different things is because people are so bent on doing the physical activity crazy go, go, go part, cardio, strength, lifting weights part, and they forget to do the stretching. Or they do a stretching, but they do like a quick like, here's two minutes stretching, I got to run, go get dinner ready, da, 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 da. There's not the actual amount of stretching needed. So you need all three components. You want to have that steady stool you want to be standing on a stool with all three legs on the ground and so that you are built up and strong and, like, it's a balanced routine. Okay, so let's talk about your work days versus your days off. Because um, a lot of times people say, well, can I just count my work days as my exercise for the week? Uh, and I would say, yeah, you definitely your days at work are exercise. However, if you can count that as all your physical activities for the week, mm, that, that depends, like I said. Are you getting all three components in? Are you getting stretches in at work? I highly doubt it. I don't. I definitely don't get stretches in. I know I come out of work and my shoulders are so tight and I feel like it should be mandatory that they have a massage therapist waiting for all the nurses when they leave work. But that's never going to happen. I shouldn't say never. You never know. But, you know, I come out feeling tight and tense and I know I didn't do any stretches all day. I was all contracting. I was all running around. I was all lifting. There was no piece of mine going on. Um, I'm learning to do the deep breathing that we talked about in one of our other sessions about the stress management and how when our patients are doing their deep breathing, we should do it as well. So maybe my lungs are now starting to get a little bit more stretching to exercise in during my shift, but generally I'm not sitting there uh, doing yoga poses um, at work. Um, so then I have to take that into consideration and say, okay, for my week, have I had all three components? And if the answer is no, then I need to deal with that in some way or another. Um, so what, whether for that for me is doing yoga or Pilates or just doing stretches on my own, I need to get that lengthening factor in. And maybe I had a good shift where there wasn't a lot of running around. Maybe it was a pretty, you know, chill shift for once. Um, and so I didn't get the cardio. I didn't get the healthy cardio. I mean, healthy cardio would be exercising for getting your heart rate up for at least 30 minutes. Um, so even if we're running around, maybe we don't get that full burst of the good beneficial cardiac. So I need to take that into consideration. Um, and then I also need to take into factor that the way I'm lifting and pulling on my patients is not exactly the best way to be getting my strength training. And am I targeting all my muscles? Um, I should be using my legs and my arms more than I'm using my back for that. But, you know, we, ne we never know how that actually plays out unless we go and physically take care of that. Um, so just take those factors into consideration. Um, doesn't mean you need to go to the gym after work, because maybe that's enough physical activity for that day. But look at it as a week thing. What happened during that whole week? And did you get all the components in? And what needs to be filled in on the days off for the things that happened on the days on? And of course, rest is included in this. There should actually, maybe there should be four legs on a stool, because rest is an important part, too. Um, so make time to be active outside of work. Make time to go be outside in nature. Go walk. Go take a hike. If you have limiting factors from injuries or something, find something that you can do um, that is still being active. And what is counted as activity is anything that is not, not sitting or laying down. Um, standing a little bit more activity than sitting or laying down, but really you should find things that you're basically moving your body. That is what is counted as activity. So you don't have to necessarily be in a gym to get a good workout, but you do need to be moving your body. And then, of course, making that time to stretch, taking the time to do those stretches for all your muscles, all your body, lengthening things back out, um, which really helps with circulation and helps with, the flow of your body and getting things to where they need to be and helping the toxins relief and all the benefits that come. And we could do a whole another talk on just the benefits of that, but making sure you're getting those things in. And then give your body what it needs before you're going to be active. If you're going to go and do 
a lot of physical activity, you want to make sure that you're setting your body up for success and getting in the protein that's going to help the muscles, getting in the energy source. Maybe it's from the carbs or, or getting that in so that you can have the energy to do the activity. And definitely hydrating so that you're hydrated enough to go be physically active. Then you want to make sure after you're active that you're replacing and replenishing your body with all the nutrients that maybe got used up in order to be physically active and maybe all the water that was used up in order to help fuel your body and your system and keep that cardio system in a good place during your workout. So making sure that you're setting those things up and being successful with that kind of activity. Um, so what do you guys do to stay active? Like what are some of the things that you guys are doing um, on your days off that you do, that you enjoy, or maybe you don't enjoy, but you're doing it anyway. But type in the comment box, guys. What are some of the things that you do for physical activity? Oh, I see yoga. I see rollerblading. Oh, I love rollerblading. I'm such a, like, 90s kid or something. <laughs> uh, stand up paddle boarding, another one of my favorites. Uh, walking the dog, yep, definitely beneficial for you and the pup. Uh, biking, very cool. These are some awesome things. And these things are fun. Uh, some people think exercise has to be boring and it has to be routine. Like, have fun being active. What are the things you used to do when you were a kid that you absolutely loved and somehow when you became adult you forgot about? Go back to those things. Um, hiking, yeah. I mean, I used to jump on the trampoline when I was a kid. Now when I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get injured. But then now I have all these fun playpens that are all guarded off. We didn't have that growing up. But, you know, that maybe I'll just go jump on a trampoline at some point. Find the things that you used to do that you love and do them and then find the things you still love and do them. And if you're like, I don't love anything, maybe we got to get you out there and trying some new things. Because um, some people say they don't like doing things, but they haven't tried anything. So how do you know you don't like it if you haven't tried it? Um, so trying new things. Um, have fun with being active. I love this photo because these nurses are old school, and they are just out there kicking a ball around in their nursing uniforms. And I'm, I love them. They're cute, but I'm glad we don't have to wear those. But even still, even with that outfit on, they are still running around having a good time. Um, so here are some of the other examples, and you guys mentioned a lot of good ones. Um, so, yeah, the, and, oh, one of my favorites that wasn't mentioned, but dancing. I love dancing, and I don't know if you can even be grumpy or mad or stressed when you're dancing. I think it's, like, un, like impossible. There's even a song about this. Um, so if you want to try and get yourself in a good mood, you know, put the radio on even if nobody's around, nobody's looking. Uh, just get yourself in that good place and move your body. Um, Yoga and Pilates we talked about were great lengthening and strength, uh, even strengthening. Yoga is actually a very good way to do strength and um, lengthening, which is a good point, actually. There are a lot of activities that count for two legs of the three-legged wheel. So you can have yoga, which is a lengthening, and stretching, which is also a strengthening, and that's already two of the legs out. And sometimes if you do a yoga that's super fast-paced, it can even be counted as a cardio yoga, and there you go. In one hour, you've achieved all three things. Um, and there's other activities that's the same thing where you can do these different activities or you do half an hour of one and half an hour of the other. So it combines your efforts. Um, sports or competitions, you can join adult teams or different things if that's something you love. Um, running or jogging, I, I mentioned there are people who love that runner's high. For me, it's not my thing. I think I get enough in at work and I'm content that that's good enough for me. Uh, but some people love running. So if you love it, do it. If you don't like running, you don't have to do it. Some people tend to think that's the only way they can get cardio in. And there are so many other ways you can get cardio. So don't force yourself to do something you hate. Find something you love and make it fun. Um, laughing depends on how much laughing you're doing, but that could be considered an ab workout. Uh, if you get together with some really good friends that always crack you up, I mean, that counts. Uh, but just start getting into doing more things where your body is moving. Um, even have walk and talks. If you want to meet up with some friends, a lot of times people will meet up at coffee shops or they'll meet for dinner or they'll meet for lunch. Well, start having like walks and talks where you're like, hey, let's walk up, grab some coffee and go for a walk around the block or go for a walk, you know, somewhere beautiful. Uh, start having it to be a more active thing. Uh, water activities are some of my favorite things. I moved to San Diego just so I could be closer to the ocean and water, so I could be in it and being active because I love it. Um, sexy time, even sexy time counts. Some people don't think of that as an activity when they're thinking of exercise, but like I said, it's anything that counts as moving your body. Move your body. 
Um, martial arts and boxing, sometimes that's a great stress reliever, um, is to take a martial arts or boxing class. And um, any kind of classes, really. Sometimes there's just, there's, they're coming out with new classes all the time. I just saw on the IA Wellness Community uh, Facebook page. I don't know if you guys are a part of that. If you're not, you should join it. There's some great stuff there. Um, but somebody had posted about a uh, basically doing yoga, floating yoga, where it was like doing yoga on like this huge board on the water. And you get in these crazy poses. And if you fall, then you fall in the water. It's not a big deal. Uh, but it looked like a lot of fun. But there, people come up with the craziest things to do to be active. Um, and so find some things that you like. There's people who are now starting to do like fencing classes, which I would have never thought about. And then I tried it one day and was like, it's not for me, but at least I tried it. But hey, that's the way people are out there being active. Um, and then of course, a personal trainer keeps you motivated, makes sure you're doing the proper uh, techniques and alignment. And then getting outdoors is one of my favorite ways to be active. I have the good weather here in San Diego. I don't know where you guys are located, but sometimes it is seasonal on whether you can work out outside. Um, but then there's always the indoor option as well. So the big takeaway would be try something new, get up, get moving, and be active even though our jobs are very active. Sometimes our jobs consist of stress activity. And while it's good, we're moving our bodies, it's, it's making our hearts pump in ways that's not always optimal. We want to make sure we're doing it in a way that's going to help and benefit our cardiovascular system. We need that blood flowing. We need our heart pumping, but we want to do it in a healthy way. We don't want to do it in a stressful way by being just high heart rate because you're so stressed out. We want to build that, you know, heart rate up naturally and, and do it in a, like, more, uh, how do I say this, more like going up the hill with the heart rate and then bringing the heart rate back down slowly as opposed to the hospital where it's like, Whoop, it shoots up real high and then it kind of stays up high until you leave and clock out. And then it slowly starts coming down as you get home and, and kind of decompress from your day. Um, so it is important to do these things outside of work as well. And the strength training as well, like we talked about, how the techniques are not always the best, even with the best techniques, and how that's not the greatest way to get your strength training in. Um, so finding a way to get that in on your days off as well. And then all this activity, all this physical, all this go, go, go. I know I'm talking about our jobs are very active. You're probably thinking, when do I get a day of rest? And that is an important component as well. You want to make sure you do have that downtime and that you are taking time to rest and, and let your body calm down and uh, not be so active. You can't be constantly active either because that was another problem that I had come into with uh, my health. I was super active and super adventurous and super crazy busy in the ICU, and I got into some issues with some heart arrhythmias because my heart and my body was like too much, too much. So you got to find that balance. you got to be able to um, have the downtime and have your down days and let your body repair because that's what it's doing when you're resting. It's repairing from the activities in the day and everything that's been going on. And so that is actually going to be uh, the talk for next week is we're going to talk about sleep and rest and the importance of it. Um, so you're going to want to hear that talk as well. Um, so that is all I have for you guys today on physical activity. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, please put it in the comment box. Uh, I would love to hear from my other nurses and how you guys are being active and what you're doing um, and your thoughts. And please, I know they sent out a wellness survey on how you felt about the uh, talk so far. So make sure to fill that out. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, all the other media that you heart life. And thank you again for joining me. And I appreciate you guys showing up and being here to listen um, to these talks. Have a good rest of your evening, guys. Thanks to everyone for joining. Thank you, Shannon, for another wonderful presentation. And don't forget to join us on Facebook. If you haven't already, look for that IO Wellness community and stay tuned for announcements of future presentations. So thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful night.